So what I want to focus on today is Chetega. And that is, if you were to charge B'nai Yisro with a sin, if you're the prosecution, and you had to read out their verdict, what did they do that was so bad? What would you charge them with, and why? Right. I pronounce the Jewish people guilty of Chetega. Okay, what does that mean? What did they do? So, what did they do that was so bad? They made a, now use an interesting word, an intermediary. Why did you use that word? Okay, something to go between. Good, good. Um, that's so bad. <laughs> Why? Why is that so bad? Oh wait a second. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> what was the word of Zara then? <laughs> yeah. Did they worship idols or not worship idols? No, not they. Didn't they not listen to their, like, they didn't listen to their leaders, they listened to their arrogance. So it's not their fault? No, that is They were just that seduced. The problem is that, that they didn't listen to their leaders, that they didn't, like, they... The leaders spoke out against the Arabah? No, but, but didn't they, like, yeah, go to Aram and said no? Poor Aram. Um, is that the Torah says? It's going to be very complicated. What did they do that was so bad? So, they gave up Right. So let's see what the Torah says. Okay? Let's see what the Torah says. Take a look at source number one, which is basically the entire chapter. Continue to be on the next page, right? So let's read. And again, I really need hours and hours and hours and hours of this properly. I could turn this into like a six week course. So I've definitely thought about doing maybe one one I've always thought about turning certain things into like a six week course and doing it like at night, not on campus, you know, like Chedega would be one of those six week things that you could really spend six weeks on. Um and and so it'd be like, you know, Ganeiden also like a six week thing on it or a four week thing on it, but yeah, one, one of these days maybe I'll do it. Okay, source number one. By Yar Ha'am. Kiboshesh Moshe Laredit Minahar. What were we all taught that means? Right, delayed. She not so simple as what it means. Moshe is delayed from coming down the mountain. But ye gahel ha'am al Aaron, and the people gathered to Aaron. Vayimru elav, and they said to him, Kum, ase lanu Elohim. Now this is what's very complicated. Make for us a what? God. So, why are you saying the word Elohim means God? Because that's what it means. But is that really true? Give me an example of the word Elohim does not mean God. Parshat Mishpatim is supposed to take the slave to the Elohim. What does Elohim mean there? Judges, a big thing. Because the word Elohim... Remember, if Elohim... Elohim Acheri means foreign gods. Right? So, often the word Elohim doesn't have to mean the big G. It could mean, but it doesn't have to mean that, does it? So, make for us a... Could be a god, which could be a Barzara. Could be a power, a deity, a leader, which could be an intermediary. We're not sure. We're not sure what they want from Aaron. Maybe Aaron's unsure what they want. Yeah. Um, Yeah, yeah, that was a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. So, is it, did that happen in real life? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Because I 
So, I mean, they wouldn't, it doesn't really make sense if you have to like, continually have all these services. Again, you may not a judge. Okay, you may not a judge, but asking for, maybe they're asking for a leader. Leaders or leaders? I don't know. Is there only one plural? Sometimes. I hope not always, because that's a big problem. Elohim often means, you know, singular, no? We refer to God as Elohim, don't we? Yeah. So. <laughs> why is Elohim why plural? Lush, but you remember again if it's talking about God who's only one? Mm-hmm. Very important. The first Ramban and Latour on the word Elohim, what does it say? Why is the word Elohim plural? Answer? Because, first of all, be careful. Okay, we have to talk about something, since you mentioned it. There is only one name of God, which is a noun. Every other name of God is an adjective. What is the only name of God that's a noun? Yud ke vav ke. Orochatat, that Hashem, the denut, is the noun. We don't know how to pronounce it, it's ineffable, but whatever. That is the noun. Every other word that we use for God, Kel, Svakot, Adon, Kel, Elohim, all those are adjectives. <laughs> really? Like no way. Really like wow, there you go. Yeah. So it says the Ramban, why Elohim? Because there are many powers, plural. But God, when you say Elohim, God is the power of all powers. El. Oh my goodness, I've been quoting this a thousand times. First Ramban, the Torah. The word Elohim in the first pasuk in the Torah. It's the Ramban. And what, is, what does the Ramban say? Ba, I remember. Baal kochot kulam. God is the master of all the powers. There are many powers in this world. There are many elim, many ills. Many, many powers, right? Sun is often a power. Gra- all of these things are powers. But God is the power of all powers. When we use the word Elohim to mean God, we're saying that God is the power of all powers, which is why it's plural. Right? Isn't that cool? Because God is the power of all... There are many powers, but Elohim is the power of, of El, of all the hymns. You follow? God is the power of all the powers. That's a... Baal Kohot Kulam. That's the famous Ramban. Okay. Um, a very important, fundamental Ramban. One of the Rambans that if you go to Jewish day school, you have to learn. Or else you shouldn't graduate. All right. So... What were we laughing? Yeah. Is that true? Sure, it's true. All right. Let's go back. So the problem is our first pasuk is ambiguous. And now you'll appreciate I don't have to learn it with you. But you see, now if I tell you a famous machlokas between Rashi and Ramban, you'll appreciate it. What does Rashi hold? What was their sin? What does Zara? What does the Ramban hold? And the Kuzari. Since you said the Kuzari, I'm going to quote the Kuzari. It wasn't what is Zara. It was making a leader, representing Moshe, taking Moshe's place, right? So, uh, no, it's about Zara light. I don't know. It's Moshe Zara. I don't know, right? But we'll connect to what you said before. Which now, what will be the function of this person? Which I'm going to prove to you why it's probably more likely it's a leader than a god. Look at the next line. I share Yochulafanenu. Let's make this god an image that will go before us. It's not God. He didn't create the world. Leader of some some image. We don't have this clear first possible seems to say we don't have the Moshe. We need a new Moshe. Now here's another problem. What did they espouse Moshe? What did they credit Moshe with? So what did Moshe do? Who the first possible? What did they give credit to Moshe for? What did he do? What's his job title? Brought us out of Egypt. Is that true or not true? Hashem did. Now you see the problem. They look at Moshe as Moshe took us out of Egypt. That's a pretty fundamental problem. That's the source of the problem. So it, since they think that it's Moshe, is gone. Now, why is it so important that we need a new Moshe? Because it's Moshe took us out of Egypt. The fundamental problem was they espoused way too much power to Moshe and not enough to God. Now, is that also a Vodazara? <laughs> right? Do you follow how it's a bit of both? Because 
that's why I like combining Rashi and Ramban together. Because on one hand, they wanted a new leader, but the leader that they wanted to reconstruct was a leader who had way too much power and control, meaning they gave way too much credit to Moshe, so therefore if Moshe is not around, they needed someone like a Moshe with too much power. <laughs> but that's fundamentally wrong, theologically. So what can they credit Moshe with? Okay. They want to credit him with taking him out of Egypt. Moses didn't take him out of Egypt. God took him out of Egypt. Well, That's well, the problem. Can you credit him with? What? He didn't take him out of Egypt. Moshe spoke to part of Morgan orchestrated the uh, Makos, right? Moshe encouraged them. Moshe, Moshe didn't take him out of Egypt. Again, taking out of Egypt means like, who walked out of Egypt? We were out of Egypt. No flying carpet. Like, who allowed this whole leaveability? <laughs> How would they ever take leave of Egypt? How would they leave? The answer is, God! It was Moshe! I would like to even argue, and I kind of threw it out there a couple of times in the past couple of months, and I threw it out as a one-liner. I don't remember. I think I, I, I'm pretty sure I did do it. One of the reasons why Moshe has a matel. Why does Moshe have a staff for? What is he a staff for? And he's like a teacher, you know, like in the olden days, or a school teacher with a staff? No. I would like to argue that the function of the staff is because Moshe is always poor. Why is Moshe walking around with his staff? Moshe takes his staff and he points. Why is Moshe pointing? Because he wants to say, it's not me. It's pointed. It's God. It's out there. It's not me. Right? Moshe never points his staff at himself. He never walks with the staff. It's not a walking stick. It could have been, but it's not. Moshe takes the staff as a pointer to always argue. Why does Moshe put his hands up in the air? I think we did this, right? Did we do this? Parsha B'Shalom. Why does Moshe put his hands up in the air when he battles a Malik? Same idea. It's not me. I'm not fighting this war. It's look upstairs. Look at God. So that's the fundamental problem, I believe, is that they look at Moshe. They give too much power and credit to Moshe. Not enough to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Therefore, when Moshe's gone, they freak out. So, it works very nicely with think both the psukim, and you'll see the, the punishment in a second, if we, we have time to get to it also. Okay, let's go on. Um, we are Parkun Remove the jewelry from your wives, and your kids, your sons, your daughters, and give them to me. That's a very strange response. Why is Aaron responding like that? Who is that guy? Okay, interesting. Anyone know what? What's he? What? 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 That's a fair rush. He wants to delay them, give him more time. I think it makes sense. Wait, what did you just say? Why does Moshe say, give me the jewelry of your wives and your kids? First of all, we see that the men are at fault, which is usually always true. It's usually the men that cause trouble. Right? It's not the women. The women are okay. Because I'll say that woman didn't sin, right? What were they given as a reward? Right? So, okay, why that is, is for another time. But we see it's interesting how maybe Aaron, why, Aaron tries to upset the crowd a little bit. Kind of delay, do this. Interesting. Okay, the bad and they begin to start our own. Look what they make. Look at Dalit. Dalit is 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 Dalit. Dalit he makes for them an ego masecha. Now, this is a hard word to translate. Well, ego is not hard word to translate. That's easy. Ego is a calf, right? A little baby cow. That's easy. But what in the world is a masecha? So we're, it's almost Purim, right? It's a mask. Some people say it's a graven. It's graven. We see it's chiseled out. But it's a very strange word. No, masecha is a strange word. Okay, well, we're, 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 we
This is the God of Israel. Now that's a proof it can't really be God because it's silly. That an ego that was created today took me out of Egypt, you know, a few weeks ago. That's just that's just absurd, right? That's not what it's saying. Again, they're trying. Again, we had, it's just about talking about this for a second. Why an ego? What's the function of a calf? I mean, what was the function of a calf in the ancient world? What did they use calves to do? What? They use cows. They use calves to plow. Very good. Yeah, baby calf. Yeah, again, not a baby. It's not a. Uh, it's not like six months old. That's a, it's like a child calf. Like it's not a baby. It's like a child. But calves were often used um, for plowing. Now, I think. Maybe what B'nai Yisrael wanted to insinuate by this calf was, again, let's have the calf do the work for us, right? It's almost as if they wanted to say, we don't want to take responsibility. We want someone to do the work for us. We want, right, we're not interested in being responsible being the direct pipeline to God. It's sometimes it's easier. Let have someone else do that. Let that be Moshe. And if Moshe is not here, we need somebody else. We don't want to do this, right? We want this intermediary. We want someone else to deal with issues. We want to like sit on the sidelines, right? We don't want to be actively to be involved or, or engaged. Now, in the aftermath, oh wait, did I put this here. Yeah. No. Yes. Yes, it's right here. Look at source two. This is so cool. In the aftermath of Chete Ego, Look at Pasuk Yud Zayin and Yerchet. Pasuk Yud Zayin and Yerchet. After. Elo hei masecha lo tasalach. Don't make a graven image of a god or of a power, right? What should you do instead? Celebrate Sukkot, Shavuot, and Pesach. How is Shloshet Regalim a response to don't make a graven image. What's the connection to them? So again, if Aliyah Raga, if going to Yerushalayim three times a year, says I'm showing commitment, I'm going to pick up and leave my house and go to the place the Beit Midrash was the place of submission, right? You bri- you didn't do things because you wanted to. You did things because you had to. Beit HaMikdash is a place of submission. It is the place with the least amount of creativity in Judaism. If you did something which you weren't supposed to do, you were death penalty. It's not the place to be creative. You have karet. can't go where you want, what you want, what you know. Even your intentions have to be right. This is how you do things. It doesn't mean you can't bring a, a voluntary sacrifice. But the holiday sacrifices are prescriptive. You could bring a donation if you want to. Choose always the donations, Right? But it was, I, I think that's the answer. Why specifically in the Asmat Chedega of the Zay? Well, don't make a graven image, because remember, you just made one. And what's the antidote is not to run from responsibility, but to take responsibility. Get up and go. Leave your house. Don't sit on your laurels. Go to a place that demands from you to be submissive, as opposed to passive. Interesting. So I think that's the contrast, specifically, again, trying to... Because we have to argue that what happens after Chedego is not punitive. God's interested in making us um, good educators, good parents. They don't give you punishments. They give you consequences, right? You know, 
because you didn't put your clothes in the laundry hamper, I will only wash your clothes in your laundry hamper. Your 30 pairs of socks are that are on the floor, you're going to now not have clean socks. It's not price of consequence. You need to pick up after yourself and put your clothes away and da 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 Or you won't have them, you know. It's not punitive. I'm not making you feel like an idiot or stupid or silly. Rather, I'm trying to educate you. So that, what God is saying, I need to know, and this is what you went wrong. Let me see if I can make it better for the next time. Let me see if I can improve. Let me see if I can work with you here, people. But that's what I Baruch Hu was saying in the aftermath of the there's a lot more to say to that, but I think I, I, I want to just highlight just that aspect. I think it's, um, I saw it this morning. Okay, yeah? So let's go back for a second. I can get really easily distracted today, so I have to focus. Um, okay. Let's go on. And what does he say? Party tomorrow. Chag l'Hashem machar. Now look what he says. For the first time we see the word Yod Kevavke being used in this whole narrative. God, despite the fact that they are bringing sacrifices to an Egel, Aaron can still say the Chag to the real big G tomorrow. I mean, Guys, up until now, this has been a joke. Stakes are low. Yeah, whatever. Calves. So. Meaning, he's able to redirect them. Did everyone say no? Does everyone say the opposite? They say yes. They are still willing to have a relationship with the big G, with God, with Yud Kivavke. What is the next part? So, next day, they wake up early in the morning. To, tomorrow morning, we're going to have a Chag Lashem Machar. What Chag? I don't know. Right? Why are they getting punished? Oh, okay, go okay, good, good, good. Hold on, hold on. Here's a great question. In fact, Kuzari asked that question. The king of the Kusars, as somebody mentioned, you, you, the king of the Kuzari, the king asks Rabbi Levi, I don't understand. It's a twofold question. Well, he flips like this. Kuzar, the, the, the king asks the Chaver and says, um, your people were so bad, they're Har Sinai. Look what they do. What's Rabbi Levi's response? The Javier's response is, no, it's not so bad. Only 3,500 people were killed. I mean, don't tell me that 600,000, don't get me wrong, that's a lot of people. But in terms of how many people were so deserving of the death penalty, it still was a very small number, again, compared to the of Rezara. So the flip side is, well, if Sobel did it, why does God want to wipe it? You mean that God going to wipe up the whole nation for just 3,500 people? Hi, that's... Whatever, that's a bit of time for everything. Good question. Okay. Next puzzle. They wake up early the next day. Ashkam minyan. Vayalu alot. Vayishushlamim. They offer korbanos. Different types. Vayeshevam. By the way, where else they offer those korbanos? This is last week's topic. Right? The korban tamid. Where they offer those sacrifices? Alos and shlamim. Four at the end of Harsinai, remember after Revelation, the end of the end of Mishpati, the end of Perach of Dalit. What do Bnei Yisrael offer? Olos and Zvachim. So they offer Olos and Zvachim by when they do the bris by Moshe. Again, when did that happen? Machlokas Rashi Ramban before after Matan Torah, but it doesn't matter. Meaning they offered sacrifices as part of the covenantal relationship to the Big G God, and now they're bringing it again. The question is, I think this based on what Aaron said, I think they really meant to bring these to the Big G. These were not necessarily, maybe, given to the ego. We don't see that in this Pasuk anywhere. And Aaron yesterday said, tomorrow there will be a celebration for the re- for Big G, Yud Kei And they do. Not so terrible. They eat, they drink, they accumulate. Now this is very problematic. What in the world does this mean? And they get up to Litzachek. Now this is a very important word. And this word alone could be a five weeks series on the concept of tzchok, on laughter in the Torah. So it comes up in many different con- in contexts. The most famous one is the name Yitzchak. Right? Happens with Yishma, happens with Yitzchak, happens with Chedega, happens with Yitzchak and Rivka. Right? There's a lot of, it's a very strange term. 
What does it mean? Vayikumu litzachek. What's going on here? So what does this term mean? Famous Rashi. One of three things. Pagan idolatry, or it means murder, or it means um, 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 immoral type of behavior. It's specific in the area of promiscuity, adultery. What's going on? What does it mean? So when Chazal say that, what do they mean? It means chaos, going after a person's lust, desire, lack of control doing whatever you want to do, not taking responsibility, you have to just murder somebody. Again, does it actually mean they murdered people? Does it actually mean that? I'm not sure. But when, in the terms of Chazal, the word letzachek, just like Mishma was being metzachek with Yishma, he was doing things which were not appropriate. Exactly what we did, we don't know. But he was out of control. Right? And look what happens in response to that. Look at this pasuk. Fight up, bear Hashem, and Moshe, go down. Why didn't God tell that to Moshe the night before? Meaning, remember, remember the order of events. This is the order of events. Today, they approached Aaron. He gathered their jewels. They produced the Egel. They celebrated. Made, it made some comments. They made it quickly, yeah. Aaron then said, tomorrow is a party for the big G. Tomorrow is celebration. They go out of control. And only at that time, God says, Moses, go down. Why didn't he say it the day before? Why doesn't God send scream at Moshe after they make the ego? Why does he wait 24 hours? The answer must be, it wasn't so bad. When did things get Really bad? Only at the point of by Yakumu Because if it was just a bit about the creation of the Egel itself, then Mo- then God at that time had twenty four hours to respond and he doesn't. It's only in their how they celebrate. And the response to that type of celebration, does Kurdish Brahu tell Moshe Ki Shiches Amcha. Now, these words are bone-chilling. When it's only about the time of Torah, we see the word hashchasa. The people have done shin chet taf. The only other time in the Torah where it describes people who behave this way is When the Torah describes what are the people of the generation of God like, uses the word hashchata. There's, I said in English, there's, um, people are being catastrophic. I don't have a word to use. Right? Isn't that word being destroyed? destroyed? Yeah, your people have been destroyed. How do you spell that? Doesn't mean, meaning, that doesn't explain Correct. it. That's not a right word. Corrupt. Oh, maybe that's a good word to use. Corrupt. Thank you. That's a good word. I like the word corrupt. So, meaning, God tells Moshe, your people are corrupt, and God describes the situation of the flood as corrupt. Thank you. Good word. That's what I was looking for. Wow. Imagine you're Moshe, and you hear the big C word, the corrupt word. Moshe knows that's a mubble word. Moshe's freaking out. Now, this will explain or understand a lot of Moshe's response. We're not going to deal with it. I think we might need the part two to explain what we might do. Right? But I'm just, I just want to put it out there. This is a muggle word. Red light. Ooh, this is an emergency. This is bad. Because we know what happens in the muggle. And if it happens in now, it's going to be catastrophic. Just because they laugh. Okay. That's what I'm saying. So it can't be laugh. Ah, it's a good joke. can't be. I told some jokes Friday night, right? Because we didn't have Mara Kawina, so I had to tell some jokes. Instead, the other night, right? I told some jokes in the morning on Shabbos, right? But the bike brought in a comedian, and he got really sick and he had to cancel the whole weekend. So the whole, so like, every rabbi who spoke somewhere had to pretend that they were the comedian. So everyone opened up with jokes. And like, we compensate the community for lack of humor over Shabbos. <laughs> it's actually quite funny. I would say this on my jokes, but it's a, it's a waste of time. So, 
Actually, the Gemara is supposed to start a shir with Divrei Pechuta. It's supposed to, supposed to start the joke to get to it. So maybe not in the middle. So anyway, that's the... We ask a good question. So it's clear that it can't just mean laughter as in, ha, 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 this is really funny. So that's why the rabbis, because I'll say it's a type of behavior. Paganism. It's adultery. It's, 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 it's murder. It's a sense of total lack of control. Loss. I mean, it's like going crazy. So then how do you decide which what type of laughter? Like when it's a good type? Yeah, but like... I mean okay, because that's why you need context. Good question. That's why you need context. Yeah. So what Hirsch argues is actually two different words. I remember seeing that somewhere. Sechok is not the same as... I don't remember. Even though it's the exact same letters. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I'm not going to... I'm not going to look it up now, but I remember that he, he tries to argue these two different words. I don't know. It sounds the same to me. Yes, fuck. Yeah. So now God said to Moshe, these are the people that you brought up. Ah, oh, very good. Okay, good. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. We have a lot to do still, don't we? Um, Kisha, Asher Heleisa Merit Mitzrayim. Asher what? Asher what? That you, <laughs> what? that you took, that you what brought up from Egypt? No. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's clear that's probably this. By the way, it yeah. also appears that God disengages from the Jewish people. No. How do I know this? Because look at the next line. Here, look at your olives. When Moshe responds, "The Chamoshef Espinesh and the Kavli Amar Lama Hashem Mechav Chav Machasher." Oh, say said Mitzrayim. No, no, no. That you took out Moshe. Correct, God. Moshe, says, you took them out. Like okay, by the way. <laughs> all right. No, so here, here's the difference, and I, I'm going to point this out. There's two different verbs that are being used. There's ale, and there's hotzi. There's brought up, and there's take out. They're not the same. So if I need to defend the Jewish people, the Jewish people argue when they first make the egel. So what did this ego do? That brought them up out of Egypt. That's not the same verb as took them out. So, one could argue, if I need to defend B'nai Yisrael, I could defend them by saying that when they make the ego, they don't say this ego took them out of Egypt. This ego brought them, or rose them out of Egypt. i got to be careful with my words here, right? Meaning, Maybe Moshe did do that. Maybe Moshe kind of brought, you know, lifted them up out of Egypt. Maybe in a metaphorical way. Tried to, helucha, let, let them out. They were down in the dumps. They were down in, in, in Egypt. They were descended into the depths of Egypt, physically, spiritually. And now, yes, Moshe maybe did help them out of that. But everyone agrees that it was God who brings them out. I share Hotsei, see, right? Hotsei, see, right? God's, in the, think of the Lashonos of Gula. God is Hotsei, but never says God is Elasi. Never uses that word. So maybe the lifting up and out is a Moshe concept, and the bringing out is a God concept. Hey, I just defend the Jewish people, didn't I? Who says this? I don't know, I just said it right now. Okay. <laughs> I'm, just using the word, I'm just trying to point out that the Torah uses different words. I'm going to be very careful. The Torah uses different words actually means what it says. So what I'm trying to say is is that the verb bringing up is not the s- verb as brought out. They're different verbs. One is lashon ale, alo, right? like aliyah, and one is lehotzi, which is bring out. Mm-hmm. The people never say, I just, I just, I just, I just it dawns on me right now, right? The, the people never say that God took them out of Egypt. God lift, you know, they're saying that this idol uh, lifted them up out of Egypt. So maybe they look at Moshe, which isn't so crazy to argue, is Moshe spiritually or physically lifted them up. Whereas God brought them out, and they admit that it was the big Jew that brought them out, but it was there you go, just defended B'nai Israel, right? Anyways, that was us. So if I distracted you with that. But I think what I, what I want to show here, I want to go through this whole argument, but Yeah.
I, mean, I, I really think that there's a lot of tension. There's a lot of, you know, is it Vodazara? Is it not Vodazara? Is a lack of leadership? Is it giving too much power to Moshe? I really, really think that that's what we really see that's going on here. We see it's not full fledged of Vodazara. Because maybe they do recognize that God brought them out. And maybe when they say that it was Moshe who lifted them out, maybe it's even that too. Maybe that is even too much. Maybe it shouldn't have been Moshe given that much credit. That maybe even that should have been, been espoused to God. Right? And so it's almost as if they don't give themselves enough credit. Right? That's what, I think, what, what you were saying before, right? You said, oh, um, they don't believe themselves. I don't remember what term you used, right? The Bible actually didn't ask about what did them so bad and you intermediary or they, they, didn't, I mean, they, they didn't give themselves enough credit that they actually did bring themselves out themselves only they could do that God might, uh, Moshe might have been a catalyst but he couldn't do it himself that's impossible one guy so um, let's um, you know, let's, end, let's end here for today um, and, and maybe in two weeks from now we'll come back and we'll go through the aftermath a little bit and we'll try to understand a little bit more what happened after Chet Egel. Can I do, do, do I have another four minutes? Can I do? Tell me no. It's fine. It's it's twelve fifteen. Can I do? I forget. All right, we'll end here and we'll we'll, we'll pick this up, uh, God willing, in uh, in two weeks. Okay? okay. Have a good day, everybody. Okay.